<clears throat> then came the best part, the part I was waiting for for weeks. You could say even for years. The whole reason why I came on this road trip. Is it broken? Yeah. Yes? Wait, what? Is it broken? No, I, I don't know. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. We were videoing my narration for part two of our Euro road trip YouTube video. You know, the video where I started off with me sitting comfortably in a chair, totally capable of drinking coffee with my right arm, and ended up with me saying bye bye with a cast on my coffee arm. Well, I injured my arm badly during our filming session for the stupidest reason that involved a longboard, this stick, and the brain that was making the decisions in my body on the 16th of April. And to make things more chaotic, I had to delay my trip back home to the UK by several weeks because I didn't come here by plane. Let's go back in time to how this all started, all the way back to the 24th of March, 2022, where I was running to pick up Janice from Stansted Airport outside of London with my high school friend Xavier. We ran because I didn't want to be too late in greeting her coming through the arrivals door. We then drove back home, hung out, and then decided to drive from my home in the UK to her house in Germany. And by the way, this part of the story is somehow significant to the aftermath of injuring my arm. According to Google, this is a 11 hour, 25 minute drive for 638 miles. Can you give me my Three or so days before doing such an expedition, the front wheels of my car's tires had gone bold to the point of seeing its inner cords. And if you don't know what seeing the inner cords of a car's tires means, it basically indicates that your tires could burst any moment whilst driving. One could say that this timing was incredibly fortunate because, well, imagine this would have happened six hours into our road trip in a town called Asse, 30 minutes outside of Brussels, Belgium. We would have had to survive on delicious Belgium chocolate followed by some probably insane roadside rescue fees. And I don't even want to think what kind of accident we would have been involved in. Check your tires before a drive, my friends. So after having to suddenly educate myself on car tires, we got one fitted swiftly at Halfords and began our journey. Making our way to Dover to catch the ferry to Dunkirk, France, we saw how flat the south of England is and had a coffee with my name spelt wrong. The ferry to Dunkirk, France got cancelled, but we were moved on to the ferry that departed to Calais, France, which increased the duration of our trip by half an hour, but no works. There was just more than five hours of our trip left. Do you hear me? <laughs> we're in France right now. Mom? Hello. Oh, no, I can't hear you now. Uh, okay, we are in France. The connection is very bad, I think. Where are you? France. Now? We are in now. France. France, 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 France. What if I call you? Okay, call me, call me, call me. You call me, okay? Hello, hello. I I hang hello. up. I'm in you, you I'm in France. Where are you? <laughs> okay, talk to you later. Bye. Love you. Bye bye. 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 Take care again. Okay. Bye. 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 Hmm? Internet. We made many breaks along the way through France, Belgium, and Germany. We have a big bottle of water for two fifty. Not bad considering it's gas station. Because tiredness plus driving is no joke. Onion rings, Chino onion rings. Entering Germany, the freakiest thing happened. Driving on the autobahn at the dark of night at midnight, my headlights shining its light on the road for so many hours, suddenly shone its light on the figure of a man walking across the autobahn. A man wearing full black with a backpack nonchalantly crossing the autobahn at midnight in pitch black. He didn't turn or flinch a bit from the incredible speeds of the cars going past. If you don't know this, the autobahn doesn't have a speed limit. Anyone can go at any speed they'd like in several segments of the autobahn. Fortunately, he was just stepping off my lane as I had come by him. It was only until he was directly in front of us, I was then able to see him lit up by my headlights, without even taking a second to check for passing cars, let alone 
walk past the flipping autobahn. We called the police to notify them and hopefully get him some help he probably really needs. However, we didn't hear any more of that and continued our journey hoping that he and other autobahn drivers are alright. Let's take a break, just stop the car. Finally, we arrived at Janice's home in Germany, safe and sound. Besides the drama, we had fun. The 16th of April. It was time to start vlogging for our second YouTube video. The long and delayed part two of our Euro road trip. Meeting Jimmy, the cutest, fluffiest. At the time, even now, I'm not so good at talking to the camera, but you have to start somewhere. For four weeks, you could say even for years. The whole reason why I came on this road trip to begin with Meeting Jimmy. Okay. <laughs> oh, the cutest, fluffiest badoodles you can befriend and take from Felix. <laughs> Even for years, you could say that I came on this road trip just to meet him. <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot to take in. Just to meet you. Just. <laughs> Because our original footage didn't contain much talking to the camera or explaining what's going on, we wanted to give some story. So I sat here and narrated. Later on, we thought we came up with the coolest idea. What if I narrated while skateboarding and holding a camera to my face? I started to learn how to skateboard just the day before, so maybe we take it to the next level. The result was me incredibly out of breath for our video. Janice had to... <clears throat> but it was cool and worth it. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> to Amsterdam. Meeting Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Having filmed 95% of my narration, we went back home to film the last part. <laughs> The part where I say goodbye, please subscribe, yada yada. Whilst cruising down this path with Janice strolling behind and taking photos of the sunset, I found a huge stick, a stick that dogs would drool for. I said to Janice, hey, what if I use this stick to boost myself on the skateboard? I call it sail skating, which doesn't make sense because I'm actually rowing myself. There's no sail involved. This is the same brain talking that landed me in the hospital. I went off, had immense fun. Janice started looking at the sunset. In the same moment Janice took a shot of the sky, I, filled with adrenaline of speed, put the stick in front of the wheels of the skateboard and sent myself flying. Rosa, are you okay? Yeah, it just hurts. What hurts? Uh, my arm and my... My left arm. Uh. <laughs> are you sure you are okay? I think so. Yeah. Is it broken? Yeah. Yes? Wait, what? Is it broken? No, I, I don't know about you. What did you do? I, I landed on my hands, putting all the force and momentum into my hands, causing immense pain and nausea. I had no idea if I broke something or not. I thought the pain would go away, but it didn't. We went back home with me getting pushed on the skateboard. I landed on the couch. Janice took a look at my elbow where the pain wouldn't go away and I saw her face light up in shock. She immediately turned to her father and started speaking German. And it was at this moment I thought, shit. Too scared to look myself. Apparently an area on my elbow was bulging something big. So, we went to the hospital, realized on the way that we were going to miss bonfire night. The hospital didn't want to let Janice come with me to speak to the doctors, but little did they know that I don't speak German very well, so they had to bring her in to translate. I had to fully extend my arm for the x-ray, which was immensely painful, and finally learned that I fractured my elbow and that it should heal in a cast for a few weeks. On our way home, we decided to participate bonfire night, but it was long after the night had started. The bonfire had already burnt to the ground. This was my first bonfire night experience in Germany though, so that was new. However, we later realized that I should delay my drive and ferry back home to the UK until I fully recover well enough to drive with two hands. 
because while my car is automatic, it is still pretty intimidating driving halfway through Europe with one arm for so many hours and then halfway up England later. I wasn't able to get my money back with a ferry, but it meant an extra two weeks with Jenna's. Woohoo! What? <laughs> the next day, I had my first Easter experience, but with a broken arm. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Easter buddy. Where were you in those other 22 years? A couple weeks later, I had my cast taken off. It was the weirdest experience my arm had ever been through. Due to not moving for several weeks, it almost felt as though that I forgot how to move it. I had to do simple exercises to try and get my arm functioning normally again. Chilling and recovering throughout the days, we did nice things like going to a wild park. Where deer can run freely in their natural habitat. <laughs> but sticks and branches haunted me for weeks and months. Fast forward to the 2nd of May. I could move my arm once again and drive with two hands. I said my goodbyes to Janice and her father and hit the lone roads, alone. I drove from Hessen, Germany, all the way to Dunkirk, France, got on Irish ferries and sailed back to England. This was an unexpected journey to Germany and back. I give my huge thanks to Janice and her father for taking such good care of me when I injured myself in the dumbest way possible. Stay safe out there on the roads and just in your daily life. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do subscribe, comment and like this video. Hope to see you in the next one and have a great day. Bye! Then came the best part, the part I was waiting for for weeks. You could even say for years. <clears throat> the whole reason why I came on this road trip. <laughs>